Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, beautiful people. It is so good to be in the presence of the Lord with you this morning. We're going to be talking about kindness this morning. Uh, and we are so excited about what God is going to do, but we're going to be talking about kindness. And we just invite God into this morning. Um, and we just love him. We adore him. And we thank you guys for waking up this morning to be a part of praying for your spouse this morning. Uh, we are excited once again to always come before you and be able to share with you what we believe that will help you as you walk this journey in choosing a spouse because it is important. So we want to pray for our spouses. We want to learn skill sets that's going to help us in relationship. So uh, we just let's let's get let's let's get it going. Thank you so much for watching the replay, guys. We appreciate you. Um, and don't forget, invite your friends, invite your family to come on. We are on 6 a.m. every Saturday morning, um, uh, dealing with the skill set and praying for the manifestation of your spouses. So today, like I said, we're going to talk about kindness. Let's get into prayer. God, we just thank you right now. We invite you, in, invite you into the prayer this morning, invite you to have your way, God. We thank you for resting on the inside of us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you, God, for there is none like you. So we give your name, the glory, and the honor. Thank you for being present. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your character of kindness. And God, we give your name, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So, guys, I want to, of course, where our main scriptures, Galatians 5, 22, 23, is talking about the fruits of the Spirit. But I want to talk about, I want to read some scriptures that deals with kindness. And I want you guys to meditate on these because this is extremely important. And I will try to put some of these in the comment section because, uh, some of them, because uh, they will recognize, I keep, if I put all of, all of them in there, they will recognize these as spam. I don't know why. But Romans two and four, or do you show contempt for the riches, the, the richness, the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? Mm. In other words, so you you know, it is God's kindness that will lead you to repentance, right? And so that is, when, when I read it, I was like, God, that is so good uh, because we deserve what we deserve, but out of his kindness, out of his character as a good father, he does not give us what he, what we deserve. He is kind to us. So then in his kindness, it is what leads us to repentance. Uh, I think that is a wonderful, wonderful scripture. And of course, you guys, we start out with First Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Um, it says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud. So even love is kind, right? So you, you remember what uh, God did for us? He sent his son. It was such a kind act uh, to to cover us because he loved us. Ephesians um, 4 and 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that may benefit those who listen. Yeah, let me read that again. Ephesians 4 and 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may be benef that it may benefit those who listen. So it is it is that's part of of God's in other words, that's part of just being kind, right? It, it's a part of being kind, and I don't think we understand it. I think we do. I think sometimes when we, um, you know, pick at one another, and even in, in relationships, those things are bound to happen. You have to be careful in the things that you say to your spouse. I'm not saying don't be honest, and I'm not saying 
don't have truthful conversation, but some things you got to be very careful about uh, mentioning or even saying. Why? Because the Bible says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their need. So according to whatever I need, your job is to build me up, build your spouse up, right? Build your future spouse up. So keep that is going to be key throughout your relationship. If you don't if, if you don't meditate on anything else, meditate on Ephesians 4 and 29. It is extremely important and it is part of the health of a relationship. I mean that was good. Micah 6 and 8. It's, I'm gonna put that one in the chat so y'all can know. Y'all can have it. Uh, let me put this one here. It says Micah 6 and 8. Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Micah 6 and 8. That's about kindness, y'all. He has shown you, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what and what does the Lord require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Colossians 3 and 12. Therefore, as God chosen people, holy, dearly love, clothe yourself with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Y'all, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. We have a responsibility as the saint, as Christians, to display the character of God through us. That's what God does. He displays his character through us, right? And part of that character is kindness. It's kindness. Let's let's practice that this week. Let's make sure we practice kindness. Let's go out of, go out of our way to practice kindness. As we learn these skill sets, we can begin to practice. Why? Because if you don't practice these things, you will see that they do not naturally come to you. Why? Because naturally our flesh is selfish and it only thinks about itself. And so when you're talking about getting into a relationship, you most definitely want to learn how to 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 clothe yourself with compassion towards your towards your um significant other you may not always feel like it um kindness humility gentleness and patience all these things are required for you to demonstrate your love to the person that you decided that you decide to choose i'm gonna say that again all of these things you are responsible to clothe yourself with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience to the one that you decide to say, I do. It's important. It is easy to get so familiar and so content into a relationship to none of these things even matter. You get impatient with each other. You get you right. You, you don't walk in humility. You don't walk in gentleness. You don't walk in compassion towards your significant other. Now you think no, no, you intended to do this, and that may be true at some point. And that doesn't mean that you don't confront it. But how you confront it matters. How they respond matters. So let's make sure that we are operating in kindness, right? We clothe ourselves with kindness. Okay, Ephesians 2 and 7. In order that in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. He expressed his kindness to us in the way of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. What does that mean? He took our place. Mm-hmm. He took our place where we deserve to be. And that's how he expressed his kindness. Sometimes let us take take someone else's place, although you know they deserve for you to go off on them. How about let's demonstrate like Christ has done and let's extend our kindness to them in the expression of, you know, not taking their place. And although you deserve this, but... I'm not going to give you what you deserve. We need to make sure that we are doing that towards our um, our significant other and the one that God brings into our life. I'm going to read that again. Ephesians 2 and 7. And all of that in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches 
of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Let me explain that again. That meant that God showed his kindness towards us, but not giving us what we deserve, but allowing Jesus Christ to take our place. And that is the same spirit we have to have in relationships. If you always think that you're going to give your partner what they deserve, then let me tell you one thing. You probably won't stay married long. Because all of us need kindness extend to us, grace and compassion. All of us. Let's practice that. It is important. Okay, Matthew 5 and 24. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them then come and offer your gift. God don't even want your gift if you can't go back and reconcile and show forth kindness towards your brother and your sister, if anybody that has a fault against you. It is important, right, that we understand that God wants to display his kindness through us. And I think we don't fully understand that we get so familiar with the people in our lives. And if you do that with the people in your lives, Nine out of ten, you're going to do that probably in a relationship. Contentment and familiarity will breed a certain level of, I'm going to say, um, a certain level of a lack of effort. Let me put it that way. A lack of effort to really display and demonstrate what God wants to, what God wants to demonstrate through us. And that is to display his kindness. And how do we display that kindness through love, through humility, through compassion, through patience? I mean, and 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 if you don't if you don't practice it, I promise you, like I said earlier, your flesh is not going to um, automatically be kind to people because our flesh is a mess. Okay, Romans two and four, or do you show contempt for the riches of kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing not realizing that God kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. I said that scripture earlier. But it is his kindness that leads us to repentance. Uh, okay, let's do Psalms 141 and 5. Let, let a righteous man strike me. That is a kindness. Let, let a righteous man strike me. That is a kindness. Let him rebuke me. That is oil on my head. My head will not refuse it for my prayer will still be against the deeds of the evildoers. Isaiah 54 and 8. In a surge of anger, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord of your Redeemer. If thy Redeemer is willing, right? He said, I, I, I'll hide in the surge of anger. I, I hid my face from you. So there are times when we even ourselves get angry, we may withdraw, we would pull away, right, in, 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 within the circumstances. But he said, but he said, but just for a moment, now we know his moment can be totally different than our moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you. And that's what kindness does. It provokes compassion for you to have towards your future spouse or, or, or the person that you're in relationship with, right? This is what it does. We are to we are to walk in the image of uh, of Christ, and part of that is extending compassion, having kindness towards one another. And let's be honest: we are not as kind as God really wants us to be. Let's let's just be honest. Some of us wake up moody. We take that moodiness and how we deal with people. We're not, you know, we we we, we don't overlook an offense, right? We so quick to want to jump at it. And it depends, don't get, don't get me wrong, it depends on what the offense is, right? You can overlook it, but some offenses you need to deal with, right? We can't just overlook, but some things you need to deal with. But I'm talking about, you know, some of those small things we can't overlook, you know, we get into our feelings and then we don't, we're not kind, right? We don't display kindness. We have to start displaying kindness when we deal with people. And you need to practice now because I promise you, you're going to need it in your relationship if you don't have one yet. If you go by always responding every time something happens, you're going to always be angry, attitude, annoyed, frustrated. That's going to always happen. So if you don't clothe yourself with kindness, you're going to find yourself always agitated. No, it's just it's just the truth. And this is the, uh, this is the last one I'm going to do. Proverbs 19 and 22. What a... Per- 
what a per what a person desires is unfailing love. Better to be poor than a liar. Right? All of that falls under kindness. The 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 the, the, the Bible says it's better to be poor than a liar. In other words, there's nothing kind about being a liar. So all of those that have lied to get riches, the Bible says it's better for you to be poor than to be a liar. Now y'all know that's kind of strong. Right? Because there's nothing about a liar that's kind. Right? What a person desires is unfailing love. Better to be poor than a liar. You would rather have love and see a love than to have somebody that lies and claim that they love you and they really don't. Because they don't show forth the kindness of God. It's not displayed in the kindness of the Lord. And like I said, let's meditate. I put a few scriptures in the in the comment for, for you guys to meditate on during the week. But y'all, when we learn the skill set, put forth that skill set. Then you realize you've built up your the, the nine fruits of the spirit. Now you're displaying those fruits of the spirit. Now people are actually saying to you, hey, I noticed that you're a little bit more patient. I noticed that you're a little bit more kind. I had someone that said to me, I noticed that you're a little bit more patient. Then I had someone that said to me, I, I, I've, I've noticed that you're a little, I, I, I see that more laid back part of you. Now I see that more laid back part of you. Because sometimes we can misinterpret people's behavior based on what they're demonstrating at the time. But that's not really who they are. So that real kind part of me is coming out. The laid back part of me is coming out. And I think we have to recognize that sometimes we are giving off something that people are picking up. And sometimes I don't understand why they think I'm like that. Well, you could be giving that off. So watch how you're demonstrating your kindness. Watch the tone and all, all that stuff demonstrates kindness, y'all. I'm working on it daily. I'm working on it daily. I am constantly working on myself daily. And it is important that if you want to be in a relationship with someone, you need to work on yourself. Do not try to get into a relationship trying to tell the other person what they need to do. If the person is not dealing with you with with and not demonstrating the nine fruits of the spirit and not showing you love, you don't have to go back and forth with that. You can just leave because you ain't married. Right? You you can just leave. That's nothing for you to go back and forth about and fighting with someone that you're dating. Either they're demonstrating it or they're not. And if they're not demonstrating it after some time, you need to move on and stop wasting your time. Don't try to change the person. You need this. I need you to see peace. I need to see joy. I need to see kindness. I need to see all these things and you're patient. No. If they do not display it while you're dating, you need to move on. It's really just that simple. We make things way much harder than necessary, especially when you're single. I do not understand single people remaining in relationships that do not produce the fruit that you know God is saying that they should produce. And you just stay in it for years. A year, you can, they're not demonstrating any fruits of the spirit. They disrespectful. They have no respect for you. They, I mean, it, they still contend and familiar with you. They don't open the doors. I mean, you just have just allowed this and you're dating and you're putting up with this. You do not have to put up that put up with that kind of stuff in dating, y'all. If they don't demonstrate this stuff after a certain amount of time, you need to move on. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your time. It's not necessary. There are millions of men out here, millions of women out here. Stop wasting your time. If they don't want to demonstrate it, move on. Don't waste your time. You, we know what the Bible is saying when we are trying to choose a mate. The, the fruits of the Spirit is one of the things that you can use. And the love chapter is one of the things that you can use to, to, to determine is this, is this person sent from the Lord or not. And don't let love bombing you uh, um, overshadow that. What do I mean by love bombing? They just bind you gifts, bind you gifts, bind you gifts, doing this, doing that. And then that and the true character of them are not coming out. That's what I'm talking about when it comes to love bombing. 
allow God, always pray, God, God, bring the hidden things to light. I need to see who I'm going to be living with. I need to see who's sitting down on the inside of that of, of that person behind them eyes. That's what I need to see. Who's that person behind those eyes? So I hope you guys take this word kindness and begin to demonstrate it. Go out of your way and do an acts of kindness. I'm talking about the people that you are in close proximity with, like your family that gets on your nerves. Go out of your way to do something kind for them. If you have a boyfriend already, go out of your way to do be kind. You got to begin to start practicing. If you don't have somebody, do it with your family. Do it with your coworkers. Do it with the church church folks. You know they hard sometimes. <laughs> and I'm family members. You know they hard sometimes. Start demonstrating this stuff. Start clothing ourselves with it. Because if you don't do it, I'm telling you, you're just not going to automatically do it once you get in a relationship. If you don't train yourself, if you don't close yourself, like the scripture says, with these fruits of the spirit, you're not going to demonstrate them. And I am telling you, people are recognizing the difference even in me because I've been teaching these things. I'm not, I'm not only teaching you, but I'm practicing them myself more. Watching, listening to myself, making sure I'm not jumping to conclusions, making sure I'm not um, not being self-righteous, I'm not being arrogant, but I'm coming off compassionate, walking in humility, not allowing my pride to to dictate what 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 move I'ma make. So I'm putting these things in practice as well. So I pray that you guys really, really take kindness and demonstrate it all this week. Practice, go out of your way. Do it at the grocery store. But most definitely do it to people that's in close proximity that get on your nerves. Because that's where you need it the most. <laughs> because when you get married, you're going to be in close proximity. You, it's nowhere to hide, is what I'm saying. It's nowhere to hide. So you might as well practice on people that's in close proximity, people you work with in ministry. Now, don't let them run you over. You know, when you practice kindness, that doesn't mean you let people run over you. When, they, when people overstep their boundaries, when you're stepping kindness, you just confront them and just say, hey, you know, don't take my kindness for granted. But you don't stop being kind. Okay? Let's not jump to conclusions. That's not being kind. So let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now. We adore you. We magnify your name on this morning. We are so excited to be in your presence. Thank you for another dynamic word this morning. Thank you for the word kindness. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that we, you are, you are demonstrating your kindness to us, and not only to us, but through the spouses that you're going to bring into our lives. We speak that over them, Lord, right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord God. We are constantly praying for them, that wherever they are, our partners are, that you are touching them right where they are. And every skill set that we're learning, you are also putting in them as well. And God, I thank you right now, Lord God, that wherever they are, uh, God, we ask that you heal them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. We thank you, Lord God, that there is nothing that you cannot do. There's nothing that's too hard for you. So whatever their desires are, we come in agreement this morning with, with, with your wills concerning them. We also thank you for the meetup. We thank you for the orchestration. We thank you for the manifestation of the spouses. We shall know them by the fruit that they bear. We shall know them by the love that they show one for another. God, we thank you that you said you will know my people, my disciples, by the love that they show for one another. So God, we just thank you right now that they will demonstrate the love and demonstrate the nine fruits of the spirit. We will see them demonstrated in their lives as, as, as we walk through the dating journey, Lord God. And so God, we just thank you right now, Lord God. We just thank you for them. We thank you for your word. Thank you Lord God, for dying for us and, 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 and showing forth your kindness towards us by sending your son to take our place and not give us what we really deserve. And just like you didn't give us what we really deserve, God, we thank you that we will not do that to those that we love. We will not give them what they really deserve because of the same grace that you extended to us. And so, God, we thank you, Lord God. We speak finances in our Father's lives. We speak deliverance. We speak healing in their lives. We speak, Lord God, that whatever they need, you will 
provide you and healing that they need, you will heal. And so, God, we thank you that as we come together, we will, that we will also sense a sense of purpose, a sense of destiny, that it will not be all about the physical and it will not all be about what they have, but we will sense a, 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 a sense of purpose and destiny with this person. So, God, we thank you that any delays we come against it right now in the name of Jesus, anything that uh, that the money they're trying to, to delay the meetup, we plead the blood of Jesus against it and we send it back to the pits of hell. That anything that we're doing that's going to delay the meetup, God, expose it to us in our personal prayer time. Lord God, what we need to do to to, to, to allow the manifestation of our spouses to flow on your timing. But God, if there's something that we're doing, expose it to us in our own personal prayer time. So God, we just give your name the honor and the glory. God, we want to say hallelujah. We just love you. Thank you for always showing up every Saturday morning at 6 a.m. with us, God, with your presence resting upon this life. Thank you, Father. We give your name the honor. We give your name the glory, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for resting on us. Thank you for being there for us. Thank you for making a way out of no way in our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you for allowing us to breathe this morning so we can show forth kindness and display who you really are in the inside of us. God, we thank you that our giftings are not more important than our love and our, and the fruits of the spirit that we demonstrate every day towards one another. God, we just thank you. Thank you, Father. We adore you. We magnify you, Lord God. And God, any of us that are watching and participating in this, if we need healing, God, heal us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. God, I speak physical healing. Wherever they are hurting, God, I pray right now that you heal it in the name of Jesus. If it's emotional healing, I pray that you heal it, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, even with to, even with our partners. If they're emotional, physical healing, heal right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Rest upon us. Never leave us, Lord God. You said it, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So that we rest in that. We know that we are never alone. That we are resting in you and moving when you say move. Go when you say go. So God, we just thank you for it. And we glorify you this morning. But I thank you for everyone that's watching. Touch them right where they are. Whatever need that they have, Lord God, I come in agreement with it that you will provide it, you will provide for every need that they have. If it's money, I speak supernatural finances. If it's healing, I speak supernatural healing. If it's comfort, I speak supernatural comfort, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, any mind-binding spirit that's trying to attack anybody that's watching this, God, we come up, the blood of Jesus comes against it and send it back to the pits of hell. We command the mind to be like you. It shall not be tormented anymore. So God, we speak peace to the mind in the name of Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. God, I thank you. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm, thank you, Father, for being faithful. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being a faithful God. In the name of Jesus, God, you be glorified. And so, God, we count these things done. We seal this life with your uh, this uh, this life and this prayer with your blood. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much for joining us. I just don't want, I just want to remind you guys about a few things that we have coming up that I'm excited about that I want to invite you guys in. We are having uh, part two. Let me show this in here if I can show this in. Let, let, let me let y'all get on the side. There we go. Yeah, we are having part two 
Saturday, April 20th at 7 p.m. Invite your friends. It's going to be great. We're going to have a good time. In part two with Xavier and Olita Stinkler. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. Um, if you have not looked at Looking for Love in All the Wrong Places, it's on my YouTube channel. Make sure you go check it out. We're excited about that. And of course, guys, I'm going to always remind you guys about women heading in the right direction. Make sure you get registered before May 31st so you can register for free. Anything after that, you will have to pay. So invite your friends. It's better for them to get it done now than to wait. And then, of course, y'all, always going to invite you to prayer every Saturday morning at 6 a.m. where we learn uh, a new skill set and go before the Lord for the manifestation of our spouses. God is a good God. He promised. He will do it. He cannot lie. So y'all have a great weekend, and I will see y'all next Saturday. Bye, y'all.